Hello everyone, my name is Virginia and today I will present the Robman app, which is a shiny app that we developed to implement the Robman tool. This is a tool to assess risk of bias due to missing evidence in network analysis and it was published recently in BMC Medicine. The framework underlying this tool evaluates the risk of bias first in each possible pairwise comparison that can be made between the interventions in the network by running both a within-study and a cross-study assessment of bias. Then it combines the judgment about the risk of bias in the pairwise comparison with the contribution that the direct comparison makes to the network estimates, uh, also possible small study effects evaluated by network meta regression, and um, any bias from an observed comparison. And then finally, a level of low risk, some concern, or high risk of bias is given to each of the network estimates. But I will move on straight to the app to show you the functionality. So the first thing the user must do is upload uh, the data, the network data. This must be a CSV file in a long format. Precisely, that means that it must be ARM-based data, so a row for each arm of the study. Um, it, some of the instructions are uh, reported here for regarding the, how the data must be formatted and then the user can view the data in this tab. What's important here to note is that the, um, it, the data set should also have, if, um, if that's the case, if available, studies for which the outcome of interest is not reported. So as you can see here, there is this study which doesn't have the values for the outcome of interest. And this is because these studies might be informative for uh, selective uh, outcome reporting, so for the within study assessment of bias. But um, let's move on to the data analysis tab, which is what we would do once the data is uploaded. So here the user must select the various parameters to run the analysis that are needed by the app to then um, calculate and run some of the assessment. So in this case, for example, we will select undesirable for that smaller outcome values are undesirable because our outcome of interest is a response. And we also select our reference treatment. And, um, and then uh, we press start analysis. This can take a few moments depending on the network you're using, on the size of the network. We are using quite a large network. So, um, and I've already run this analysis before, and I'll show you, this is the network we, I'm um, using to demonstrate the app. It's a network of 18 uh, antidepressants from head-to-head -head studies. And uh, because it's quite large, it can take a few moments to run the analysis. So this is what you will get once the analysis is completed. First, you will get a data summary with various characteristics also for the network, the interventions and the comparison. But you will also get output for the frequencies and Bayesian network meta analysis, as well as, as, well as uh, Bayesian network meta regressions. And what I really want to show you, though, is the main output that you will get from the app. So uh, first, you will, uh, we will go to the pairwise comparison table. Here, all the possible pairwise comparison are automatically grouped according to whether they have data available for the outcome of interest, only for other outcomes, like these two comparison here in group B, or they were unobserved, so they were not identified in the systematic review at all. What's also done automatically by the app is the calculation of the total sample size um, and, and the, number, the total number of studies both for those studies reporting the outcome of interest, but also in total those identified in the systematic review. And this is reported for each comparison. Then these two columns are important because uh, for, for the first assessment, the within study assessment of bias, because um, when there are comparisons where there are extra studies, so uh, studies that did not report the outcome of interest, as we can see here for comparison number six, where there are 14 in total, but 12 reported the outcome of interest, the user must decide whether um, there is a selective outcome reporting bias. So it must decide whether um, it first needs to assess whether the studies uh, did not report the outcome for reason uh, um, associated with the, the, the results found for the outcome of interest, such as, I don't know, the p-value, 
the magnitude of the result, and also whether this uh, study then, the, the non-inclusion of the study, um, can make a difference with the synthesized results. If so, then a suspected bias uh, can be selected, like in this case. But there may also be cases where even if there are extra studies, like we can see comparison number nine here, there are five extra studies, but because the total sample size is already quite large and the relative sample size uh, brought by these five extra studies, it's uh, relative to the total sample size is not a lot, then we don't think that it would affect the synthesized results. And that's why we selected no bias detected. So this assessment is done, as I said, for the comparison that have a difference um, of uh, the sample size in the two column, as well as those comparison in group B, so that did not report the outcome of interest, but obviously not for the unobserved comparison. While the next assessment, the across-study assessment of bias, commonly known as publication bias, can be done for all comparisons. And this is done mainly using qualitative, qualitative consideration, such as like whether it was possible to get gray data, uh, sorry, good data from gray literature, or whether there is well-known uh, publication bias in that field or for that comparison. Additionally, the user can also look at quantitative techniques if there are at least um, 10 studies for a specific comparison. And yeah, you can consider the funnel plots and the small test of small study effects. But as I said, these are only in addition to the qualitative consideration. And if in the network there are a comparison with at least 10 studies, the Robin app does not calculate any of the quantitative techniques. Finally, we assign an overall bias judgment to each of the comparison by uh, merging these two assessment. And it can be easily done by pressing the button here. Uh, and it's essentially just looking at um, the algorithm. It's not actually difficult. It's just looking at whether there is suspected bias in either columns. Otherwise, it's no bias detected. Once the judgments are done, then we move on to the main output um, that we will get from our Robben tool and app, which is the Robben table. And here, once again, the network estimates are already grouped automatically by the app based on the, whether they are mixed or direct estimates, or whether they are indirect estimates, as you can see here. And here, the, it, as I said before, the judgment is combined, first of all, with the contribution that the direct comparison makes to the network estimates. And here, already calculated by the app, is the contribution uh, is the percentage of contribution that comes from a pairwise comparison of suspected bias. And it's already also divided in how this bias is directed, whether it is favoring uh, the first treatment or the second treatment in a comparison. To do so, um, the app uh, uses the contribution matrix. Uh, so it runs the, I think it's called, it's the contribution flow package in R. Can also, the contribution matrix is also available and it can be downloaded in the app. And what the user must do in the next column is evaluate whether, uh, how is this contribution then uh, um, affecting the network estimate? So here, uh, something subjective, some sort of subjective judgment must be made. So for example, here we say that um, if there is a difference of at least 15, then that contributes a substantial contribution. So for example, here, uh, we see that there is 32%, 25% going in one direction. So we have selected a substantial contribution from bias favoring that uh, specific treatment that goes in that direction. Same for the second um, uh, estimate. But for the third and fourth, we'll see there's only 3%, so it's less than 50%, but there's actually zero and zero. So it's no con so substantial contribution from bias. There are also cases where, for example, this, um, uh, there is a the substantial contribution in both directions. So here, 33% and 46%. So the difference between them is less than 15. And so we, for example, might decide that it is some, somehow balanced. And so we decide to give a substantial contribution from bias balance level. So um, 
as you can see, I'm not going to do them all for all because there's uh, in total 153 estimates. So um, I'm going to move on to the next part, which is the bias assessment for indirect evidence. So because the contribution part only comes from the direct comparison, but we made a judgment also for uh, unobserved comparisons in the, in the previous table, this must also count uh, in our final judgments. Because if the reason why the studies, this comparison were observed, are related um, to the results found in the studies, then we will have bias. This might lead to bias. As you can see, for the first part of the table, for the first group, this is grayed out. And this is exactly because we have already considered the, the part of the, the, the contribution from the direct comparison, while this part, the bias assessment, is only for indirect evidence. So it's only considering the unobserved comparison. And it's only done, as you can see, for the indirect part. So here it's not grayed out. And the user must uh, doesn't have to do anything. This is already copied from the previous table, from the last column of the previous table. The last part here, the last assessment, then it's evaluate whether there is any possible small study effects as evaluated by the network meta regression that, as I shown you before, has been run by the app. And um, I mean, the user can look at the output, but what the uh, app automatically does is include the unadjusted and adjusted uh, Bayesian estimates. And um, also, I forgot to say that the network manner regression is run uh, using the smallest observed variance as a covariate to give an to see and give an indication whether there is a small study effect or not. What the user must do in the next column is evaluate whether there is evidence of small study effects by comparing these two estimates as well as the credible interval. So if we see that, as in this case, there, there are in very different and there is good overlap uh, between the credible intervals, then there is no evidence of small study effects. Otherwise, once again, we would say small study effects favoring uh, uh, one uh, direction or the other, one treatment or the other. In this case, because Mm, we didn't find any evidence. So to make it easier anyway, you can also once again set to all to no evidence. And then if there is evidence for any of the estimates, it can also be changed manually. So that's quicker. So finally, um, we are at the end of our assessment and we just need to give our, the overall risk of bias level combining these three parts for each of the network estimate. To do so, well, the user can also just press the use algorithm to calculate over risk, overall risk of bias judgment here, as we are doing now. And as you see, give automatically a some concern low risk or high risk level. So the thing here is that um, the algorithm that applies is the algorithm that we described in our paper here. I'm not going to go through it because I have no time but um, it's a more complex algorithm, unlike the one in the previous table. But the, if the user does not agree with it, so if he want to use stricter rules or actually more relaxed rules, it can also change the, um, uh, the judgment. So as you can see here, it was showing yellow because it's not the one calculated by the algorithm, but it's perfectly fine. So uh, we are at the end of it. The last bit about the app is that the table, both of them, but I'll only show you tape for the second table, can be downloaded as CSV. And uh, so that can also be included in reports and uh, things like that. So finally, I just want to well, thank you for your attention. I want to remind you that um, of the uh, where to find the app and also the paper that described, um, doesn't describe exactly the functionality of the app, but it describes the uh, uh, Rockman framework and tool. We plan to uh, write soon, uh, actually publish soon a manual, um, a paper that would be more of a manual for the app. And I also want to thank the two people that have helped me with the development of this app. So um, first, uh, Todoris Papa Costantino and also Alex Holloway. And if you have any questions, you can ask after the session or just uh, yeah, write me on and send me an email. Thank you very much.